are watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God. God bless you. Yes, God richly bless you and thank you for joining me once again as we study the Word of God together. And if this is your first time, welcome to our study on the book of Hebrews, um, chapter 11, from verse 32 to 34. If you've missed any of our series, you can always catch it online at our YouTube channel, YouTube channel that is YouTube at Noah's Ark Sanctuary um, Church. So at the moment, we'll be looking at um, different men of faith mentioned in the 32, 32nd verse of Hebrews 11. Uh, we've looked at... Um, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah. Now we are at David. So I believe we're going to learn something good from this gentleman, which is known not only in his, in the his sacred world, but also in the secular world. So David was one of the greatest king of Israel. His name meant beloved. You know, there was no one recorded before him giving that name in the Bible. So it was such a unique name. David was born to a man called Jesse in 1 Samuel chapter 17, 12 to 40. We read that um, David was the last born of the eight sons of Jesse. And he was also called the, the, uh, a warrior. He was a worshiper. He was called the sweet psalmist of Israel in 2 Samuel 23, 1 to 2. You know, the Bible says, you know, he was a man that was raised up by God on high, a man who was anointed by God, the sweet psalmist of Israel. And even Jesus Christ identified himself as come from the lineage of David, you know, as prophesied in scriptures. In Matthew 21, 9, in the temple, while Jesus rode on a donkey, Jerusalem, the people were singing, um, blessed be the name of the Lord, Hosanna to the son of David. And even a Gentile woman, a Canaanite woman, you know, came to Jesus, you know, to plead for healing for her daughter. And she said, have mercy upon your God, have mercy, O son of David. So they knew he was the son of David. He, he, Jesus identified himself as uh, uh, coming from David. And David is mentioned more than any other person in, in the New, Test New Testament, 56 times. And also, when you look at Abraham, Abraham had 14 chapters in the Bible, but David had 62 chapters devoted to him, meaning God has something for us to learn through the life of this great man of God. You know, God has something to teach us, encourage us, and to warn us. I want to emphasize on that word, warn us. That is, warn us of the consequences of disobedience, you know, from the life of David. So which comes to my first lesson in our message today. Our God does not only encourage and bless us, He wants and disciplines us as well because He is a God of grace and truth. You know, the Bible says in John 1 that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in verse 14 it says, The Word became flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, you know, begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That is, our God is a God of grace and truth. Grace meaning, meaning God does not only tell us nice things, bless us with nice th things, builds build us up and encourage, encourages us, but God also corrects us, okay? The, book, the Holy Bible is an inspired book and tells us not only the good deeds of people, the good side of people, also, you know, the wrong choices that they made as we will learn through the life of David. Now, even though David was beloved by God and he did great things and amazing things, but yet the Bible tells us about the things that he, he did so that we can learn from his mistakes. You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 6 to 7, that the word of God is inspired and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Again, in Revelation 3, 19, Jesus said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chase. Meaning, he's a God of grace. God loves us. You know, he, he, he loves to bless us. He's a God of loving, kindness, and mercy. He's also a God of truth. That is, he will tell us when we go off course. When we go offline, 
Because, and why am I emphasizing on this? Because there is a demonic philosophy or teaching going around today in some churches, scrapped in some churches, saying, don't say things to make people uncomfortable in church. Don't preach about sin. You see, people need encouragement. They already had a bad week, so you don't need to make life miserable for them by calling out their sins. So we see that there are some churches, some ministries, or Christian ministers who only preach things that people love to hear, not what they need. They give motivational speeches to keep the people happy and coming. But the Bible says that in the last days there will be these false prophets. And in, in Second Peter chapter 2, verse, he said, Many will follow this evil teaching and shameful immorality. Because, see, these ministries focus on what tickle the flesh, what the flesh loves. Like, you know, they focus more on peace, um, pleasure, prophecies, and prosperity. Okay? They give political and personal prophecies asserting that God has told them this and God has told them that. And, we, and Jeremiah, the, uh, the prophet, prophesied uh, of these coming events when he, he spoke about this prophecy in Jeremiah 5.31. And, and, and the fact that the people love it that way. In Jeremiah 5.31 it says, um, the prophets give false prophecies, the priests rule with an iron hand. Why should my people love it so? And again in chapter 8 of Jeremiah verse 10 to 11 it says, um, Yes, even my prophets and priests are, are like, they're all frauds. They offer superficial treatments to my people. They give assurance of peace where there is no peace. And in fact, that when these people made these prophecies, political prophecies, and does, and does not even come past, and you find that people don't learn, people still follow them. And this is what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 18.20 regarding such people. He said, if the prophet speaks in the Lord's name, but his prediction doesn't happen or come true, you will know that the Lord did not give him that message. Because when people think, they say, the Lord told me. Okay, the New, New Testament also warns us of these coming days where people always you know, we always want to hear what they like to hear, things that would tickle their ears and not the truth. In Second Timothy chapter 4, Paul warned Timothy about these things that are coming upon the world, and it's even worse now. So Paul warned Timothy, saying, and if you're a minister, and this is a word for you as well, he said, preach the word of God. Be prepared, whether the time is favorable or not, whether the, you know, it's comfortable or not, preach the word patiently, correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For the time is coming when people no longer listen to stand and awesome teaching, they will follow their own desire and look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching hurts on TV. And that's the case today. You know, people um, shop for churches. If they don't like the truth, you know, they move to a different church. You see, there are many people who resent the truth of God today because it convicts them of their sins. So they find churches that will make them comfortable. You know, um, there was a man who, a prophet in First Kings, his name is Mikai, was invited to, in fact, he was um, reluctantly invited to a conference. He wasn't invited to this conference because they know he speaks the truth, so people don't like um, hearing the truth. So he was rejected at first, and um, in this conference, it was about how to overcome um, an enemy. And there was a man there who was called Josephat, and he said, you know, because there were a lot of prophets there, over 400 prophets there, you know, and um, he discerned that this, this, there's something not right here. And he said, is there no, any other prophet? And then the king said, yes, there's one prophet, but, you know, he always prophesied bad things, you know. And um, I, this is in First Kings 22, 8. He says, uh, the king said, there's one, man, one more man who could consult the Lord for us, but I hate him. He never prophesies anything but trouble for me. You know, people don't like prophet to hear the truth. And then... This man was sent for in the end, and the messenger said to him, please, you know, everybody's, you know, towing the train. Don't mess things up. Don't spoil the move. You know, just say nice things. And then he said in First Kings 20, 22, verse 14, which should be a motto, which should be something that every man of God should, should declare, should have in it. So he said, as surely as the Lord lives, that's First Kings 22, 14, I will still only what the Lord tells me to say. And that should be our motto. That should be, you know, our, our mission. You see, because God's main goal for us is not happiness. You know, God's main goal for us is holiness. That will show a desire for holiness. First Peter 1.6 says, Be holy, for I am holy. 
So it's main goal for us to be holy. Uh, and, and again, Rom- Romans 8.29, that again, God says he wants us to be conformed to the image of his son, to be like Jesus. So when God looks into your life, when God looks at you, he sees Christ, not the flesh. So God wants us to be holy. God wants us to be humble. God wants us to be hungry. The Bible says, blessed are those who hunger and taste for righteousness. Because when you are holy, when you are humble, you see, when you are hungry for God, then happiness will come. Because happiness, full, um, um, full contentment, satisfaction, you know, comes from righteousness. You see, happiness, joy is a byproduct of righteousness. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and test for, for they shall be filled, they shall be satisfied. Blessed means happiness, joy. You see, there's no way you can be happy, you know, without Christ, without walking in Christ, without walking in truth. Because the Bible says, you know, there's no peace for the wicked. So people may even have, you may have things of this life, but yet not truly experience the joy and peace of God. And it's the lesson for us uh, parents and guidance as well. You know, as we're looking as we're looking at a God of grace and truth that not only blesses us but also wants us. That is our parents and, and guidance which not only we should not just pamper our children, you know, because we say, well I've had I've had a bad life, then I want my children to be happy. You, you know, we don't we don't um we don't express truth. We don't speak truth. Remember God is a God of grace. That is yes we express loving kindness mercy. You know we are quick to forgive you know to, to, to show kindness to make allowance for fault but also we need to speak the truth when they uh, when they go wrong as Proverbs 13 24 says those who spare the rod hate their children but those who love their children care enough to discipline them we must love people enough as parents as ministers to tell them the truth you know for example in a, a rich man I give an example of um, uh, of uh, grace and truth. Biblical example of grace and truth. There was a rich man who came to Jesus' church, came came to Jesus' ministry, and, and he asked a question. He said, "Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life?" You find this story in Mark chapter ten, and this was a man who could be, you know, if he, he was in Jesus, it was you know he would give them you know, lots of money because he was rich, you know. But Jesus, being a God of grace and truth, you know, said this. You know, um, I read um, from verse twenty one. The Bible said Jesus, looking at the man, felt genuine love for him. Jesus loved this man. But yet, remember, he was God of grace. He also speak the truth to him, saying, you know what, but go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor, and then you have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Jesus knew, you know, that this man had an idol in his heart, and that was money. He loved money more than God. So Jesus told him the truth because he wanted to bring him to himself or sadly the man turned away just many people do they don't want to hear the truth if you're speaking the truth you know they go away and um, go for a ministry or a church where you know they are comfortable now let's come to David so David rose from a humble background you know remember the title of the story God uses ordinary people David was an ordinary person from a humble and poor background because he was you know looking after sheep his father's sheep because if you're a rich person your child don't look after the sheep did the servants do but you know they were ordinary average people how do we know it was so because even the bible tells us that even david said so when he was told that you know the king you know favored him and um, he would give the king would give him uh, his daughter and then we read in first kings uh, sorry first samuel 18 verse 23 uh, when Saul's men said these things to David, he replied, How can a poor man from a humble family afford the bride price for the daughter of the king? You see, David comes from an ordinary family. And um, David was, brought, brought, was born into a contest of a situation whereby Israel was in unbelief. You know, they become idolaters. They f- they forgotten God. God, uh, you know, they, they, they rejected God and they wanted a king they could see. And um, this king, in a way, failed them. And this king, who, who was the first king of Israel, called Saul, you know, um, disobeyed God in multiple occasions. He was called to be king, but disobeyed God, and therefore he was replaced. Which comes to the next, next thing. No one is irreplaceable, okay? None of us is irreplaceable. If we are unfaithful to our calling of God, you see, God will use someone else. I don't know maybe what God has called you to do. 
maybe God is calling you to repent of a certain sin. God is calling you to move forward or to, to serve in, in, in a certain aspect of ministry. You know, whatever God has called you to do uh, and you keep on disobeying, you know, um, God will replace you. God is you know, called you to use your gifts, whatever your gifts might be, maybe in giving, in serving, in helping, in singing, in playing, you know, but you are so reluctant and lazy. You see, God will take it away from you. And this is what the Bible says about these things. In Matthew 25, uh, talking about a servant who sat upon his gift. He said, in Matthew 25 from verse 3, he said, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Do you hear that? That's a serious truth. That is, if you are not faithful in what God is giving you, God will take it away and give it to someone else who is faithful. So our prayer should be, God, pass me not by. You know, that like God passed by the brothers of the, um, David. In the Bible, said God rejected them. I pray that God will not reject you in Jesus' name. Maybe God is calling you. It's time for you to step up and rise up. So why does God use the unqualified people? Why does God use ordinary people? Why? Because he alone wants to get the glory. You see, Isaiah 42, 8 says, God will not share his glory with another, with an idol. God will not allow his works to be attributed to the work of a false god. Okay? And also, God will not allow human beings to take credit for what he does as it is by our own power, skill, and wisdom. And we see this attitude in, in, in our present world today where, you know, the world in its wisdom denies God, fails to acknowledge God. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20, we read that um, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or give him thanks. And they began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. As we in the world today, those who believe there is no God, who reject God, who believe in the Big Bang Theory, evolutionalists, you know. So they, they, the Bible says God gave them up to a reprobate mind. That's a mind that does not walk, you know, that, that thinks foolish things. You see, let's look at some biblical examples of those who, you know, were destroyed because they, they, they um, accepted worship from men. They did not give God glory. For example, Herod, you know, Herod, you know, in the book of Acts, you know, was praised by men and he received worship. And because he did, he was struck down by God. Another person was Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament, Daniel 4. You know, he said, look at what I've built by my power. And as he said that, you know, judgment came upon him. He was driven away from men to leave us animals to eat grass like cows. You see, when we fail to give glory to God, we bring judgment upon ourselves. You see, why? Because God is not shopping. That's why God, we need to be encouraged. Maybe you feel ordinary, you say, well, God cannot use me, I'm nobody. You know, that's a lie. You are made in God's image. God did not make mistakes when he made you. You are special, you are unique. You, you've got a gift that God is placed in you. You are not a waste of space or waste of time. You see, and, and, and because God is not shopping for talented people, beautiful people, gifted people, famous people. Yes, he can use their ball, but he seeks more of a people who have a heart for him, like David, a man after God's heart, a, a people who are ordinary, humble, and available. And that's the question you need to ask yourself. Am I available to be used for God? Do I make myself available, or am I too busy for God? That's the question you need to ask yourself. So, why is David a man after God's own heart? You see, David was focused on the essential. And what is the essential? God was the most important thing in his life. He, he, he said to us in Psalm 27, verse 4, he said, The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, meditating on his, in his temple. So God, he said, David's um, priority in his life is to see God, to live for God. For many today, even in the church, you know, our priority is to live for ourselves, to live for our job, to live for entertainment, to live for sport. You know, we talk about that so often and we talk, I talk about God. You know, Paul said, for me to live is Christ. Do you live for God? And also David does, does, does not only put God first in his life. He, he always seek God in every situation. As the Bible says, lean on all, not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. We see that in David in 1 Samuel 23. I read a, a couple of verses there where David asked the Lord, Should I go and attack them? And again, 
in um, verse 9 to 12, you know, he asked God, God, should I do this? Should I do that? You know, will, will, will they help him? And God said, yes. Sometimes God would say no. You see, you always see God in every situation, in every thing he backs on. But I see the Lord in all that you do. Are you such a person that sees God, ask counsel from God, or just go in your own strength and to learn to see God? And David is a man that loved God's house. Okay, he loved God's house. In Psalm 26, David said this, I love your sanctuary, Lord, the place where your glorious presence dwells. Again, in Psalm 122, he said, I was glad, verse 1, when the senators go to the house of the Lord. Some people are not glad. You know, for them, it's a chore. You know, it, it's a chore to pray. It's a chore to read the Bible, you know, to go to church. Even today, there are many Christians that don't even go to church anymore. They say, the Spirit told me, you know, oh, I should take time off. That's the life from the devil. You see, how do we know the, uh, well, the Spirit of God is speaking to us? When, it confirm, when the Word of God confirms it, when it's from the Word, the Spirit has come to testify the truth. The Bible says, do not forsake the assemblies of gathering of sin together. You know, they, you know because some people are just, well, I just to go online, online, online. Or, online is not the gathering of people. We need to start going to church this day. You know, when you look at the Muslims, you know, they, whenever they say mocks is packed, and they are growing, and churches are closing because of you. That you know, you sit down there. If you are physically fit, you know, say, well, well, I don't have to go to church. You're going to answer to God. You know, but if God is not forcing your life, you're an idolater. The, and if you're a man after God's heart, David is a man after God's heart. You will love the house of God. You love where His glory dwells. You will serve in His church. The Bible says, "Do not de be deceived." In First Corinthians six nine to ten, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. You know, neither fornicators nor idolaters. You see, idolaters are those who put everything else uh, ahead of God, above God. They love those things more than God. You spend your time, energy, effort, you know, more than you do God. When it comes to God, you give excuses. It's, it's, that's his time. You take time off. You take time, you, you take time off. You say, well, I don't have time. I need to, you know, um, you know, um, get around the church of the house, I need to have some time off, you know, and you abandon the, the house of the Lord. Revelation 21, 78 said, All who have victorious will inherit the blessings, but uh, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But cowards, unbelievers, corrupt, murderers, immoral, those who practice witchcraft, and idol worshippers, you know, will their faith will be in the fairy lake of burning sulfur. So, God is speaking to us today. You see, God uses ordinary people. Okay, God is not waiting for you to be perfect too, uh, to be um, to have a degree in theology. Yes, it has its place, but God wants you to be available now. He said, "Whom shall I send? Who is available now? Would you go?" Because it does not depend on your on your on your degree or your qualification, but your obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Are you willing to go? God is calling. God is challenging you to rise up. No excuse, I'm ordinary. With God with you, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. With God with you, you are great, you are special, you're a mighty person of value because God is with you. All we need is God, nothing else. Amen? Your humility and your available. So, as a roundup, do you want to inherit the kingdom of God? Perhaps idolaters, if you are idolaters, will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are not saved today, God is calling you. If you've not given your life to Christ, if you've not submitted your life to Christ, there's no way you can be a man after God's heart. If you want to be a man after God's heart, you need to repent of your sins. You need to agree with God, I'm a sinner. The, 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 if you keep on going, holding on to your sins, say, well, I'll do it later. I'm not ready yet. You're an idolater. And, and, and again, as I always say, no one is promised tomorrow. You are, you are playing Russian roulette. Anything could happen. You die and you are just one breath away from hell. So if God is speaking to you today, don't postpone it. Don't wait. Don't say, well, let me enjoy life first. You, you know, the Bible says now is the time to give your life to Christ. And if God is speaking to you, the Spirit of God is convicting you, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he rose again from the dead. I receive him into my life. I confess him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me, Lord. And grant me the grace to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. If you say that prayer, are you and you meet with all your heart, your name is written in God's book of life. And God and there are things that you need to do in order to grow. You need a church family. Very important to find a church family to grow. And if you don't have a church, I pray that God will lead you to right one. And if you are close to us in Woodford, please feel free to join us again. Come out with us. You need to read the Bible. You know, get to know God, acquaint yourself. You need to feed your spirit in order to grow. This is how we get to know God. I I need to I and um I need to um like I said earlier, fellowship with other Christians and keep watching. And if you're watching this from YouTube, uh, please feel free to share this um, video so others too can be blessed in Jesus' name. So before I leave, I want to leave with this blessing, you know, um, that I pray that God Almighty will bless you and be gracious unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just feel that someone is watching me right now, that you're watching me right now, you are, you are, you are filled with heaviness. I pray that that heaviness will be lifted in Jesus' name. Yes, it is God is God God is broken that you by the reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken in Jesus. Just receive that in the mighty name of Jesus. So I say may God bless you and fill you with his peace. Yes, may he be gracious upon you. May he protect you. May he protect you and your family in Jesus' mighty name. So thank you once again for watching. And I hope to see you same time and same place. And do not forget, keep. And one thing we require of you from this ministry is that you pray for us. It's more than anything. So God bless you. Thank you. Amen. watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God.